Many perceive the first world to be a wonderful place of privilege and magic, with no struggles and no violence. But this cannot be any more distant from the truth. The cold, hard reality of the situation is that the first world countries are riddled with struggles that its citizens must deal with on a daily basis. No longer do these people live the simple lives of an age past. Nowadays, they live in the dark realm of hardship. In this world, students are likely the ones that face the greatest hardship, and therefore, this documentary will address their painful lives. And be warned, for this documentary will be too graphic for some viewers. And now for an exclusive interview with Dr. Smith the third, an expert in first world struggles. Hello, Dr. Smith Westfield the third of England. Um, how are you doing today? Well, you know, I'm, I'm fantastic. Um, but you know, any day is sort of somewhat, somewhat ruined for me when I, when I see the struggles that all the kids are facing these days. It, it really puts a damper on my day, you know. Yeah. So I see you're a PhD in a First World Struggles. Oh yeah, Whew. that was a that was a heck of a degree. And you've time. worked with children throughout your many years of study and seeing all of their. So could you just like, explain kind of what are the main struggles these students face? Well, you know, it, it's, it's quite a lot, but and it's really hard for me to summarize it into a couple bullet points here. But to, to start off with, uh, you've got the fact that they're waking up at just terrible hours in the morning. These kids are getting up at like six o'clock in the morning, sometimes even eight. Can you believe it? This is a tragedy of this nation. I mean, you've got classes giving them work, just in excessive amounts of work. You've got, like, forced social interaction. The thing is, the worst part of it is our children, the future of America, are facing these struggles on a daily basis and being just truly injured by these. Yeah. One struggle of this dark and perilous world is forcible waking in the morning a terrible epidemic that has spread throughout the United States. Established schools require students to attend school at a certain time in the morning. This has led to the daily and regular use of horrible machines that frighten students from their comfortable sleep and remind them of their daily duty. These horrors have led to relentless and sleep-deprived students who are forced to wake at the cruel and unusual hour of seven in the morning. So, um, could you uh, please kind of develop more into uh, how the issue of sleeping and having to wake up at cruel and unusual hours in the morning is really affecting our children? Well, you see, these kids, they, they got their alarm set to like six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and they get up and they got baggy eyes and they got, they got like, I mean, what are you giving them for food in the mornings? They got, what, Lucky Charms? You think Lucky Charms are going to take you through the morning? I mean, it's it's almost as bad as starving kids in Africa, I'll tell you that. Actually, you know what, it may even be worse. And uh, what, do you think, uh, what do you think about alarm clocks and their piercing sound that scares children oh, yeah. into sleep? Yeah, yeah those, those are terrible. I tell you, those are severely affecting the mental health of these children. You're going to see them walking around as adults trying to do their jobs, just like walking around like zombies because they're so tired. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's... We now cut to some first-hand testimonies from students enduring these hardships. Their faces have been hidden for their personal safety. So one of my struggles is that I have to always have my two cups of coffee in the morning to get through the day, no matter what. I have to have my coffee. I can't wake up, I can't even get out of bed before I've had a swig of coffee. All right, that's why I always keep a little cup next to my bed. You know, everyone just needs that rush every so often, right? Personally, I've had nightmares waking me up in the middle of the night, thinking that there it is again. I have to wake up, but it's two in the morning, and it's just in my head. It's the most painful, alerting sound. I hear it ringing in my ringing in my ears halfway through the day it's like it never stops it's a struggle man i mean it's just horrible like it's just such a horrible problem that people my age have to deal with and it's just not fair like i get it it's 
sleep, but it's really something I need, and it's just too much. Like, school, and I have to sleep too, and gosh, it's just, I can't take it anymore. While waking up in the morning has been a major epidemic across the country, students have been facing an equally perilous hardship, taking classes in school. Schools in the U.S. force students to take certain courses, such as English, history, and math. Such courses poison the minds of students and make them work long hours, reducing their minds to a state of deprivation and boredom. These courses supposedly prepare students for life in the first world, but in fact they kill their student's mind before even being able to enter their horrid world. Some may call this mercy, but this is no merciful act, as it is a slow and painful death, rather than a swift and merciful one. Okay, so you, we see these children that are struggling with sleep issues and uh, waking up in the morning. And how do you think that these children are also getting affected by schoolwork at the horrors of just being forced into labor oh, on a constant and daily basis? I mean, it's just... I mean, it's basically slavery. Like, they're doing these math problems for these teachers. I mean, what are what are the teachers using them for? Why do they need to solve us all the problems? Yeah, like, why do they need us to solve the problems? I mean, I, I, I think they might... I, I mean, this is conspiratorial here, right? I think that they might be using mm -hmm. our math problems, our students' math problems, mm -hmm. and sending them to the big corporations oh, as, yeah. like, calculations and stuff. Like... I mean, what else, why else would they ask kids yeah. for all their work? I that, mean, that's really, that's really. So, about their time, also. Mm -hmm. How do you think it's affected their time and their obligations, their duty to society? Oh, jeez, their time. Well, see, I mean, they get home, they got all this work. They, I mean, what can they do? They, they've, they've, they can't play video games for eight hours. I mean, they can't, they can't wander around in their neighborhood and potentially get like kidnapped or anything like kids used to i mean what these kids, kids are these just days. they're gonna be they're gonna be like growing up and just terribly developed adults my uh english class has almost hypnotized me and caused me to you know be in a permanent struggle of how to you know cope with my feelings because you know, he puts a really hard clamp on my work schedule. And, you know, working outside of school, I don't know if I have enough time for my family now. And it's just come to a point where, you know, I have to choose. And it's awful. You know, writing. 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 It's just awful. It's getting to my mind. Like, I have too much homework, too much work to do in general. Like. English? Like, what even is that? I know how to speak English and... For me, my English class, no matter what teacher, no matter who's in my class, it's always a pain. The homework I can never understand, the long hours, taking all of my time, taking my mental energy, <laughs> ruining my life, really. It's unbearable. Finally, the most cruel of these struggles is likely forced social interaction in schools. Students are packed into schools by the hundreds and share classes with each other. Here they are forced to interact with each other, having relationships and making friends. These interactions have forced these children to put on a mask and act like the world they live in is pleasing and great, when in reality, it is a hive of scum and villainy. Now, another struggle that I, I see you to told me mm -hmm. about is uh, having to interact with other students, having mm -hmm. to interact with other people that they may not like. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you see this, you see this, of course, in the hallways, of course, in the lunchrooms. I mean, that's, that's, that's going to happen when you create such a terrible environment for these kids. Yeah. But also... You see this outside of school. You see this on the internet. You've got, I mean, think about like Instagram, for example. Yeah. Somebody likes your post. Mm -hmm. I don't like their post. Why do I have to then like their posts? Continuing on, it says, 
person's social interaction. So you talk about these kids having to do this in the hallways, and mm-hmm. how do you think it makes them feel, and how do you think they have to interact in these hallways with other students? Mm. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. I once had to talk to my grandma once. Um, we were we were it was Christmas time, and I mean this is just, this is you can sort of like this is sort of analogy an analogy yeah. to what they have to go through. And I started trying to talk to her. I started, I said one thing. I said, Grandma, pass the bread. And do you know what she told me? What? She told me an hour-long story. Oh, my God. An hour-long story about the day on the farm when she slaughtered chickens with her parents. Oh, that, that and is true. During dinner time of all times. And guess what? You know Ooh. what? I am a vegetarian. What you're saying about this is that these kids are having to deal with terribly annoying and boring stories yeah. on a daily basis from people they don't even like. Exactly. They have to deal It's just BS. I mean, I'm not a social person, okay? I mean, I don't see why I should have to talk to people. I don't know why I should have to get in a circle and say my name in my favorite movie. It's just, it's ridiculous. And like, I'm not going to adapt to these people's lifestyles. You can't make me do that. I'm my own person with rights. Like, I just don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And I can't handle it like so it's just so painful and these people i have to be nice to i don't even like half of them i don't like anyone i just can't take it anymore (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry when i'm in the hallways and some losers come up to me in the hallway you know and want to talk to me i don't feel like responding i don't I don't need that. Well, late one night, my friend slid into my DMs about a new internet fad. So naturally, I I had to stay up late that night analyzing, researching this new internet fad. And come the next morning, I had to scream this new internet fad like an incoherent Neanderthal in the hallways, as everyone else was. Made, made me feel disgusting inside, but I had to. These struggles are not the petty hardships that result from a life of comfort and ease, but the torments of a scarred generation. The future of this nation is at stake, and these issues must be faced as a reality. Something must be done about it. Our children should not be working like slaves in school nor be as sleep-deprived as zombies. And most of all, they should not be obliged to wear a mask in society and pretend to like their grandma's tweet. It is time to act and to change the horrid lives of these children by taking action. Donate to the Post-Waking Stress Disorder, PWSD Foundation, or petition your schools. It is a time for change. It is time to make a difference. And now a word from our generous sponsor, The Crab Emporium. For just this month, one dollar of each $5.99 crab slab from The Crab Emporium will go to kids suffering with PWSD, post-waking stress disorder. Donate today!